Frontier Airlines rising in the pre-market. This after the company beats second quarter profit expectations, narrowly beat on the top line. Want to get straight over to Phil LeBeau right now because he's got a very special guest this morning. Phil. Thank you, Andrew. Let's bring in Barry Biffle, CEO of Frontier Airlines, joining us from Denver today. Um, Barry, Andrew set this up. You beat the street in the second quarter, but your guidance for the third quarter and the second half of this year uh, coming in below what analysts were expecting. Paint a picture of what you see as far as the landscape over the next six months uh, for uh, Frontier. Sure. Thanks for having us, Phil. And um, things have changed a little bit, I think, uh, versus you know, just a few months ago. I mean, we have surveyed our customers and we've got a five-point movement in, in our just in the frontier customer base that is actually traveling to Europe on a year-over-year -year basis, and that's causing some pressure and some moderation in fares in the domestic environment. And I think it's just you're seeing last year was maybe the year for domestic, and this year is the, the year for international. And so we'll see that pin-up demand kind of rotate back, especially by the time you get to winter. Uh, you're going to see people going more to the Florida and the Caribbean than, than going to the Apple Tower once we get to February. So that's caused some near-term pressure. Uh, in our case, uh, we put out a guide at 4 to 7 percent. We were disappointed that number should be double digit, but three points of it is simply the shift to Europe. And we've got another three points uh, contributed to the air traffic control challenges that we're seeing uh, related to the weather events. So, so until we can kind of get through those and, and, and kind of and get past that and these temporary challenges, it's going to pressure the near term. So, Barry, let me be clear here, because there's been a lot of hand-wringing by investors who are wondering, has domestic demand for travel peaked, or have we seen a peak in terms of airfares? You don't believe that's the case. You believe there's going to be a rotation back, correct? Well, we were curious ourselves. So, look, we, we hear these same same concerns, and so we, we just went out and, and, and surveyed our customers, and uh, we found the European information, but we also found something else that's very interesting. So over 90 percent of our customers plan to travel the same or more uh, than before on a go-forward basis, and actually half of them are planning to travel even more, with only 7% planning to travel less. So, so the demand is there and growing uh, versus you know, 2019, 2022 even, uh, but the challenge is in the near term, they, they went to Europe this summer. You know, for you guys, ancillary revenue is a big deal. It averaged about $80 per customer in the second quarter, flat with the first quarter. You've targeted getting it up to $85. How do you raise that? Or do you notice that as the economy has had some bumps along the way over the last six months, people are a little, maybe a little more cost conscious when it comes to some of the add-ons uh, that are part of ancillary revenue for you guys? Well, look, I mean, what's great about our model is, is people want to save money. They can actually choose to, to have less options. You know, in some cases, if you're fully bundled, you don't have that option. You, you, you have to pay the full price. Um, so, look, sure, there could be some pressure if there's, if there's some financial concerns. Uh, but the reality is we have a very robust pipeline. Um, we have years uh, in the making uh, to continue to increase that. In fact, our long-term target remains $100. So, so we have a lot of things coming out. Um, we continue to innovate on our Go Wild Pass. We just launched our monthly product uh, for that as well. So there's plenty of things in the tank that we have to continue to grow it. Uh, but yes, it, it could be challenged if, if we continue to see some drag uh, in the momentum of domestic pricing. Barry, about a year ago, I went back and I looked at the tape. It was about a year ago that you guys ended your bid to buy Spirit uh, airlines. And now you see what's happened in the last year between Spirit and JetBlue. You see that the DOJ is fighting them. You see that it may not come through. I know you wanted the deal to go through, but is there a part of you that says we avoided a lot of headaches there? And, and maybe in hindsight, all things worked out best for us. Well, I get a headache just thinking about uh, that, that experience. Uh, thank you for reminding me. It's been a year. Um, look, I, I, I think that... Uh, the process is going forward, um, and, and I think their trial is in October. Um, I, I'm actually encouraged uh, that they actually can get this thing through. I, I know in the past I, I didn't actually believe that, um, but it looks like it, it, it very well could. And I think when you look at the power of the big four and what they exert on the marketplace, I think you know there's a real opportunity here uh, to, to have another carrier that, that, that can compete with them. Uh, but uh, we will see what happens. Uh, it is uh, – Yes, it, it is very challenging right now. There's a lot of talk about it, and, and uh, the government is, is putting up a tough fight. Hey, Barry, we have to wrap up the interview, but I know that Becky's always interested in the Go Wild Pass. How many people are you having uh, taking advantage of that? 
We haven't disclosed it, but uh, it's, it, it has exceeded our expectations uh, multiple times, and we continue to innovate. We have the annual product, we have the we have the seasonal, we have the summer seasonal, and we have a fall and winter seasonal, and we not also now introduce a monthly. So, so we kind of have whatever you're looking for. You can even try it out now uh, with the monthly before you commit to an annual pass. So, uh, hopefully, Becky's gotten her. Well, you can fly. Two ninety nine. No, I'm right? sure Becky loves the all you can fly option. All you can fly fall and winter is at two ninety nine. Is that right, Barry? That's correct. That's correct. It's a great value. It's the best value in travel. Especially if you don't have a job and you could be on the road or a student, yeah. maybe going around. Yeah. If, you, if you're yeah, working from home or students or students, I mean, anyone with a little bit of flexibility or retirees, it, it's a great it is, product. It is the all you can eat buffet.